Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Greg. Welcome back to My Machine Shop. Last time we manufactured our crankcase proper. Today we're going to take this round of aluminum and we're going to make this front crankcase part. Let's pull this off of here and come up with our machining strategy on the lathe. So this is our crankcase front. We've got a ball bearing in the front and a ball bearing in the rear. So the way I machine this, I put this in the lathe and I clamp this side in the chuck and I machine this this way. Um, we'll see that. So we'll machine all of these features here, the taper, and when we're done, we'll part it off, turn it around in the lathe, face, and bore this last part for the bearing in the front. Then we'll put it in the mill, drill these holes, then mount it back to the crankcase, clamp the crankcase in the mill, and machine the slot here for our timing belt. All right, well, let's go to the lathe and see if we can turn this into this. All right, let's go. A tool holder with a bearing screwed into the end of it makes a great tool to rough center stock like this. Then I face the end and turn down the spigot that will fit into the main crankcase. I'm using a centering four jaw chuck to get a solid bite on this work because I've got a large stick out. Yeah, I like that fit. Now that I no longer need access to the end of the workpiece, I place a live center into the end to stabilize the part as I've got some heavier cutting to do. Now we continue moving towards the front of the finished part, machining the flange that will be used to secure it to the main crankcase body. We remove as much material as we can in preparation for cutting the large taper. We've now roughed in the taper by cutting the large diameter at one end and the small diameter at the other. We dial in the taper angle into our compound, paint the part with die kim so we can watch our progress, then lock down the carriage and using only the compound and cross slide dials begin cutting the taper. Once we're happy with the taper, we unlock the carriage and at the small end, move our cutting tool towards the chuck to get a nice smooth transition from our taper to the forward section. Very nice. We're now done with the outside features here on the lathe. We'll turn our attention to the inside bore and create the pocket for the rear bearing. We spot drill and then use increasingly larger drill bits to rough out the through hole. Once the through hole is completed, it's time to put in the bearing pocket for the rear bearing. We finish off the pocket for the rear bearing with the boring bar, carefully approaching the final dimension of both the outer diameter and the depth, test fitting as we go. Wow, that looks really good. Now it's time to part our workpiece off and turn it around in the lathe and do the bearing at the other end. We turn the workpiece around, mounting it in the four jaw chuck, and use our dial indicator to measure the flange right at the chuck and at the section furthest from the chuck. We need to maintain concentricity all the way through the part, not just at the end where the dial indicator is marked here. This is very important. Once we're satisfied that we've mounted our workpiece with perfect concentricity, we will face the front surface and now everything's square. Then it's just another boring operation to create the pocket for the front bearing. Awesome! Let's now pull the part out of the lathe and mount it in the mill using our bolt hole center function to create the eight holes used to mount it to the main crankcase. 
Our final feature is the hole in the top of the crankcase for the timing belt. This needs to be vertical with respect to the main crankcase. So we mount the front crankcase to the main crankcase and then put it back in the mill. Here I'm centering my mill y-axis on the vice jaws. Then I use the face of the front crankcase flange to zero my x-axis. I use a quarter inch end mill to rough in the hole, making one last climbing mill pass around the perimeter. All right, now we've not only finished the front crankcase, we've finished the whole crankcase. Next up will be the cylinder sleeve and then the cylinder. We'll make the cylinder sleeve first to ensure a tight fit to our cylinder. All right, until next time, I'm Greg. Thanks for visiting me in my machine shop. Take care.